G'day guys, John here, Chief Instructor with FPV Australia. Um, it is the 9th of April today, 2016. I thought I'd do this quick little video because there's been a lot of kerfuffle in our industry since CASA released their wanted changes to uh, the regulations in, re in regards to flying drones commercially in Australia. So, uh, this video is not gonna give you my opinion. What this video is gonna do is tell you what is right now and what may be coming. And I say maybe, we'll get back to that in a minute. So, first and foremost, what is right now? Nothing has changed as of the April 9th. If you want to fly a drone commercially in Australia, a Phantom, Phantom 2, Phantom 3, Phantom 4, Inspire, S1000, S1, uh, doesn't matter. You need a controller certificate and you need a UOC, an operator certificate, to operate under. That hasn't changed, so let's put that to bed. There's plenty of websites and people out there going, oh, I can fly legally now, I don't need a license. Right now, as of the 9th of April 2016, yes you do. That will not change until these new regs come into place at the earliest, 24th or something of September. We'll get back to that in a minute. What may be coming, and the reason I say maybe is, is because there's a whole lot of detail we don't know yet. The regulations have been written, the amendments they want to put in place, CASA want to put in place. Um, the links are in this description if you want to have a look. They've been written, but there's a big chunk of it missing called the Manual of Standards. It's another document that is going to sit side by side and, and detail, I guess, what can and can't be done under these regulations. For instance, people ask me, well, what does that mean, John? For instance, the regulations state that a sub two kilo machine can fly commercially without need for certification as long as they adhere to a whole bunch of steps, uh, 30 meters from people, 400 feet height limit, not at night, um, blah, 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 uh, and not near a towered airfield. What the manual standards might come in and say, and also not near non-towered airfields and helipads. Could be. Um, all that sort of stuff. There's, there's a whole bunch of detail missing. So for, for people to say, oh yeah, I know what's coming in September, I can do X, Y, Z, they're going off a bit premature. There's already organizations out there now touting, oh, you know, we're setting up training is already in place for these new rules. Well, these new rules aren't in yet, one. The earliest they can come in is September 24, but it may be January, February, March, July next year when they actually do. The earliest they can come in is a six month waiting period. Um, CASA have approved them and whatnot, and they're in that approval process, but the final rubber stamp can only happen after the 24th of September. It doesn't mean it will happen on the 24th of September. Now I can tell you that there's a big push from industry uh, that aren't happy with this. I'm yet to speak to one UOC holder that is completely happy with the regulations the way they've been written. But furthermore, we don't know what the final detail will be because we haven't seen the manual of standards. So for anyone to say they know what's coming and you can do this and you can do that after September is kidding themselves. We don't know exactly yet. We need to A, wait for the manual of standards and we need to see what actually happens from pushback from industry because there's what, 500 odd UOC holders out there right now who are probably 90% of them not happy, if not 100%. Everyone I speak to says they're not happy in total. Um, I'm not going to give you my opinion in this video, that's not what it's for. The other change that's happened is the UOC process has become a little easier. Uh, previously it was a big pile of manuals with all your flight manuals and checklists and blah, 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 blah. Send it off to CASA, pay someone to do it if you couldn't. Five grand later, CASA come out and test fly you and away you go. A little bit of change has happened. CASA have released a template, which is great. It's, um, it's actually quite easy to fill out now. If you, if you don't know where it is, I'll put the link in the description here. Um, back to the CASA website where you can get it. Um, they'll send you an information pack that includes that template and some instructions on how to fill it out. You send that back in, and if it's a pretty standard OC um, with, you know, Inspire or whatever else and Phantom, it's about two grand now for the cost, and, um, and the template is the only thing you need to fill in and submit. There is another section to it called the Tech Library or the Operations Library. That's another set of little documents that'll have your checklists in it and your flight manuals in it and all that sort of stuff. It is not required at the time of submitting your OC, right now in April the 9th, uh, it is something that the Chief Pilot will get into place over the coming 12 months of him being operational. And CASA will obviously check and make sure they're in, in place but it's not a document you need to submit right now. So don't let someone say to you, oh, you've got to sit a course for a thousand bucks or you've got to pay these guys three grand to write your manuals. You don't. Unless, of course, you've got custom built aircraft and custom programmed and all that sort of stuff. That's a different story. But if it's standard off the shelf product, get the template from CASA and have a look at it first before you make any hasty decisions. My, my, uh, my advice, I get asked a lot, what's my advice, John? Uh, what should I do? Well, here's my advice. 
If you're gonna enter this industry, and I'm passionate about this industry, I've been in it for, for 10 years plus now, um, get trained. Even if you're gonna fly a Phantom, get trained. It's not just about knowing how to push the sticks and, and fly these things around the sky. That, that's one thing, and you might have been flying aircraft for 20 years, great. I've been flying since like, far back as I can remember. But it's all the stuff that goes in and around it. Um, the safety aspects, the safety to yourself, the safety to the public. It's fine to say, you know what, I'm allowed to fly next to this helipad. Yeah, but what are the ramifications and what's involved in and around you while you do? It's, it's simple. If you're going to be a professional, then be a professional. Um, that's just my advice. My other advice is don't count on what you read online as being gospel come September 24 or after. I think that's a silly mistake. Um, there's a lot of opinions online and you know people sort of sit behind a keyboard and bang away. I think if, if we're going to take this serious, we need to engage CASA and find out A, what's in that manual of standards when it gets released, and, uh, and then we can take a step to move forward about what's really going to happen and how much industry pushback is there going to be. There's a lot of unhappy people and I think there's a lot of water to go under the bridge yet before anything gets rubber stamped. That's just my, uh, my advice, I think. If, you, if you're serious, then be serious. Um, be safe, first and foremost. That, that goes without saying. Um, so look, I hope this uh, video has been informative to you. Um, if not, and you want some further informa information, uh, feel free to email us, uh, training at fpvaustralia.com.au, um, or, or, or contact us by phone. All the details are on our website, but uh, 02 6112 We'll take you straight to the flight school. Um, give us a call, send us an email. Happy to help answer any questions you have or clear up any of the confusion. I hope this has helped you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll continue to post these sorts of informative videos as we move forward um, to keep everybody up to speed. Uh, in the meantime, if you are flying, please fly safely. Safe skies for all. Enjoy.